Peter has also built a baffle box, a device to filter out sediment from the stream, which could damage the fragile trout eggs. Touch wood, the water will come through this pipe and end up in my hatchery box over there. From the baffle box, clean, oxygenated water is siphoned into the hatchery, where Peter's trout eggs will be stored. The idea is to replicate a natural riverbed, but in a controlled environment. Seems to be working. The water is trickling over, moving, keeping it oxygenated, and it's ready for the eggs. But to get the eggs, I need some fish that are ready to spawn, and I think I've got to strip them, whatever that is. After constructing his trout hatchery, Peter now needs fertilised eggs. These guys, are, they're ready to spawn, aren't they? These fish are ready to spawn. He's come to see fish farmer Trevor Wyatt, who's netted some female brown trout. Beautiful fish with lovely red spots down the flank. Trevor plans to remove the unfertilised eggs from the trout, which she would normally lay on the riverbed. So how, how can you tell when they're, they're ready? Well, they're uh, quite swollen and soft on the belly there. She's full of eggs. Right. So if you would hold the bowl for me. Removing the eggs from the trout involves a delicate and harmless process known as stripping. She's ready to spawn there. Oh, blimey. I think these are just the, the eggs coming out of it. These are, these are the wonderful eggs. So gently stroke the eggs towards the vent and they'll come out into the bowl quite naturally. Wow, that's a lot of eggs. And it's an awful lot of eggs. How many eggs are we looking at here? Uh, this fish is about two pounds and therefore should give us about 15 to 1600 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. It's a lot of eggs. And this, it doesn't hurt the fish at all? It, it doesn't harm them at all. As long as we're careful not to squeeze too, too tight, tight. Yeah. Um, then the fish are perfectly okay. Right. And eventually we'll see where the stomach is completely collapsed, all the eggs are out, and uh, we can release the fish back into the river. She's going to... back to where she came from. So we've got the female eggs in the bowl. Yes. And we're now adding the male... The milt. The milt, yes. Right. I suppose trout sperm? Trout sperm is exactly what it is. In the wild, a male trout would release his sperm onto the eggs lying in the riverbed. Gently stir the milt into the eggs. So from that moment onwards, the young fish are starting to develop. First cell divisions are taking place. By doing a hatchery, I suppose you've got slightly more control. We have a lot more control, and in actual fact, um, we can get 80% or even more of these eggs to be properly fertilised. Wow. We're in the wild, maybe only two or three percent really? would be fertilised. So, I mean, in, in, in this way, if we manage to enhance the number of fish in the stream, then the stream can be restored to its former glory. Gently does it. This is your new home. It's taken me ages to build this hatchery. I hope you like it. Yes, it looks very nice. Well, thank you for saying that. Right, if I pop you in here. Peter must get his fertilised trout eggs into the fresh, oxygenated water of his hatchery as quickly as possible before they begin to die. All these eggs have a tiny little black dot in the centre of them. So I'm hoping these little black dots are natural. I'm hoping that's just the nucleus of the egg. And I'm going to lay these very carefully onto the glass rods. Ooh. Easier said than done. The idea of the glass rods, it will help us identify the bad eggs and then we can periodically get rid of them because they turn white 
they grow spores, and those spores affect the other eggs. A bit like apples in a barrel. That's a bad one there. It's gone white. Just starting to go bad. It's very, very fiddly, but I can see the merits of the system. It's really a sort of man conquering his environment, isn't it? Playing God with fish. Right, now that we've got, well, a number of eggs on our glass rods, it's time to put them into the water. Just hope at the end of all this, we get at least one trout. For Peter, the trout hatchery is becoming a full-time job. He's checking on it twice a day. All these leaves are getting swept down and they're clogging up these pipes. I'm trying my hardest with chicken wire just to keep the pipe open and the flow of water into the hatchery continuous. It's an everlasting battle. There we go. Got it. Leaves are clogging up the baffle box, which is supposed to filter out sediment from the stream, keeping the hatchery and its fragile eggs clean. Oh. Everything is covered in sediment. Do they all look pretty white to you? That is properly white. That is a dead egg. Every single day. They're quite warm though. The boots are quite waterproof. They, uh, it traps the water and it gets heated up. It's nice. Oh, that one's delusional. It's been 41 days since Peter introduced the fertilised eggs to his hatchery. The trout should now be hatching. Let's see how they're doing. There's quite a few dead eggs there. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, it's a real insight into the effort that went into a new enterprise. Because this has been a real struggle. You're playing God without really knowing what God should be doing, if that makes sense. There's so much silt coming through here. Well, this one's silting up a lot. An awful lot. Oh! Just down here. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, waxing lyrical about, oh, it might fail. That, if I'm not very much mistaken, are trout and they're moving and they've got the little sack they have hatched. We've got at least three. At least three. That is absolutely incredible. They've got the, the, uh, the egg sack, which is currently feeding them. But once they've finished eating that, a bit like a tadpole, they then have to find their own food. And that's when I'm gonna to have to build them a new tank. And that's when I'm gonna to have to start grinding up rabbit and then we feed them into trout. I think we have fought and we have won. We have trout. We have succeeded in our new enterprise. <laughs>